And welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. And um, here we are again in the Las Vegas studios. I'm here with Matt. Once again, Jacob, still um, uh, in sober living and uh, getting himself better. I spoke to him last night. He sounds fantastic. So we're all super excited and uh, hopeful. And a huge thanks to all of you for... look. Outside of the regular support you guys you guys give this podcast, the amount of support and love that has been sent out uh, to Jacob is overwhelming for me, man. Um, the amount of tears shed in the meet and greet this weekend in Salt Lake City was like crazy. Um, and just really honored and humbled um, by the love and support that you guys send out. And so just know we're 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 pouring it back into you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Before I get started and what I was going to talk about this week, ladies and gentlemen, I posted something today on my Instagram and on the Facebooks, and it was just a simple video because I had spoken to somebody about what we thought was the most overrated popular film of all time. All right. I need your help. So curious. If you had to pick one popular movie that was you thought was overrated, what would it be? I just had this conversation with a friend of mine, and I'll give you my choice. This is going to be very unpopular. Elf, single most overrated film of all time, and it doesn't hold up at all. What's yours? Mine, without a doubt, is Elf. It's not... First of all, if Will Ferrell wasn't in that movie, it's hot garbage. It's like if anyone else had been it and this is peak Will Ferrell man. So first of all, peak Will Ferrell is is a different type of comedy that does not hold up today. But even back then, it's just Will Ferrell being funny. The movie itself was a just a big bowl of doo doo stew. A hundred percent. So, and I knew that was going to be an unpopular opinion, but it turns out there were more unpopular. Let me just tell you what the top five, and I went through a bunch of these responses on Instagram and Facebook, and here's what it seems like the top five is. And and I'll give you my, my opinion on all. In the top five, without a doubt, Forrest Gump, and how dare you? How fucking dare you put Forrest Gump in the top five most overrated films. Now, let me just say as a caveat, I said most overrated films that were popular. Some of you were like, <laughs> Scooby-Doo. I'm like, come on, dude. Just get your shit together. I'm not just saying movie you hate. I mean, a movie that is held up by the rest of society is great. And then you're like, I don't get it. Okay? So uh, Scooby-Doo doesn't fit in that. All right? Elf is one of those things that's elevated and people are like, I can't wait to wait up. I can't wait to wait. But Forrest Gump, widely known as one of the greatest movies of all time, for you to put Forrest Gump in the top, and here's why I take umbrage with it. One, it was a groundbreaking movie. Nobody had ever told a story like that and put people in to actual news footage from the past. I know it seems dumb now, but back then, I was like, how did they get him next to Elvis? Uh, 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 is he really standing next to Richard Nixon? Like, that was fucking crazy. And what a great story. And what a gr- almost a perfectly written script. I, I'm not saying it's Shawshank Redemption. I'm not, But God, in hindsight, I guess you can shit on Forrest Gump. In the moment, without, and I don't think you can because it's still a, a, no words wasted script and a groundbreaking film. So eat a dick is what I would tell you about overrating Forrest Gump. Another movie that you guys put in the top five, I agree with a hundred percent and I've never seen it. I've never seen it. That's how I know 
I I knew I was going to Titanic. It was it three hours on a boat. I know how it ends. I know exactly how this movie ends. So it's three hours on a boat, and I just am trying to see if Leonardo DiCaprio fucks Kate Winslet. That's it. And look, guys, I know some people like her titties are in that. Yeah, that's great. I got the internet. I've seen titties a lot. I'm a grown up. I'm not going to a movie because there are tits in it. There are tits out of the movie that I can actually see and touch myself. So I don't need your movie titties to, and not e- now look, I get it. If you're 14 or 15 and you're watching this movie laying on your stomach in your parents' house, but there are better titty movies than the Titanic. Okay. So Titanic, three hours of boring waiting for this. It's like, can I tell you what it's like? When I read um, Steve Jobs' book, first of all, the most unlikable human in the world. I couldn't wait for the chapter that just said cancer. I was like, when does that, when do I get to the part there where he's got cancer? This is the same thing with that Titanic. When does the boat start to sink? I don't give a fuck about anything else leading up to that. I've, it's why Beth was like, you got to go see it. It's a great movie. I'm like, no, nah, I can't imagine I'm interested enough in these people to see what happens up until the boat sinking. I think I'm just waiting for that part. So even without seeing Titanic, I agree with you. Top five most overrated film of all time. Do you know what else was on this list that a lot of people put on there? And by the way, those of you listing Fast and Furious, I get it, but I don't think you're quite under it's like when people say anybody any of the marvel movies i get it but if you're upset that fast and furious doesn't have a strong enough story for you you don't get why they made them it's it's a vroom vroom guys it's a vroom vroom movie it's you know a couple of little jokes from ludicrous you know vin diesel trying to convince everybody that he's not gay and you know some fun fast cars you know, that's what it is. It's Vroom Vroom, Vin Diesel trying to pretend that he doesn't swish when he walks. Dude, he swings his hips, that tiny little dude. That dude sucks all the dicks. Are you kidding? <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, and I love how he acts tough. Like th- that fucking beef he had with The Rock. I wish The Rock had punched a hole in his chest and shit in it. That little dude seems like a fucking, just a dick. All the stories I've ever heard about Vin Diesel is just dick, a dick, a dick, a dick. It, that's what happens when you don't come out of the closet and you're not allowed to be who you want to be. You're just an asshole to people. And that's kind of why I think he is the way he is. Allegedly, one person's opinion. But guys, if you're if you're saying Fast and Furious, that I don't think everyone... Nobody's like, this was the this script. Nobody ever mentions the script. It's the vroom vroom. It's a popcorn movie. So I don't... I, it's hard for me to put popcorn movies in this type of list because you're expecting too much out of them. It's just there to watch and go, oh, and ooh, and oh, you know what I mean? So I get it, but like, hmm. but a lot of you put The Godfather in this. And I could not disagree more with your take on The Godfather being overrated. There was somebody who sent in a list and they had five movies and they were all from the eighties. And I was like, oh yeah, but that's just, you don't like old, it's a different job. It's a different style, stylistically. So I'm asking you to put those kind of predisposed, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? doesn't matter. Preconceived notions. Yeah, whatever. There, there we go. Thank you. I'm asking you to put those away. By the way, guys, on purpose, I don't, I'm not showing Matt. I just want you to hear his voice and imagine what he looks like. And then a couple of weeks from now, I'm going to ask everybody to send in a picture of what you think Matt looks like. <laughs> That's going to be so much fun, dude. Do you, Matt, do you think they're going to come close? Nope. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Okay. So yeah, Godfather guys is just like, I get it that it moves kind of slowly in some places. I get it. I guess I get it. But I don't think there's a way. It's a three-hour movie. Here's the only thing I would have cut down. 
you probably don't need to spend the first 20 minutes at the wedding. I don't need to see it all. It's cool, man. And it's cool to see how movies used to be shot where you had all these extras and you think about, oh, this is all fucking film. They, they had to, this is film. This wasn't digital that they could just erase and move. This is fucking film. So that is pretty awesome for me to think about. But dude, the Godfather, it, there isn't a wasted outside of that, the wedding. There isn't a, a for a three hour movie, not to have a wasted scene, not to have a wasted word, not to have something that didn't help push the story through. Yo, dude, Godfather. Now, Godfather 3, terrible. Terrible! Terrible! And it, that even has handsome Andy Garcia in it. Dude, it's so handsome. But yeah, I, I would say you're dead wrong on Godfather. Here is a, a two basically franchises that got a lot of votes. Any Harry Potter and any Star Wars. Disagree, disagree on both. Disagree, disagree on both Harry Potter and by the way Lord of the Rings which is my favorite trilogy of all time got a lot of votes too and you people clearly don't know what a good movie again no wasted scene every scene pushes it the characters are perfect come on but I would tell you here is what the first the top five were the other uh, uh, Titanic Godfather uh, Forrest Gump Yo, here's another one that I agree on that I've never seen that was definitely in the top five. The Notebook. Never seen it. Never gonna. Never seen it. Never gonna. Never seen it. Never gonna. Because I think those these romantic comedies, they put unrealistic expectations on, yeah, why don't you act like Ryan Gosling? I've never been like... <laughs> I've never been like, yeah, I'll, I'll act like Ryan Gosling as soon as you start acting like Jenna Jameson. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know you like these movies. I like these ones. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'll fucking for real write you a letter every day. But I got a couple of requests too, you know? It's just unrealistic expectations. I, I, uh, I've never seen it. I've been asked to see The Notebook a couple times. I just... That is in the top five for people too. And so I would, and I'm going to put Harry Potter and Star Wars together. Those two franchises, Forrest Gump, Godfather, uh, Titanic, and Elf. Those seem to be up there. But I'm so curious what you all think. Um, what your, is in your, your top, like, and not, again, don't say like, Somebody said no country for old men. I get that, but it's not in the zeitgeist in the way as these other ones have seen as they're part of Americana. You know, things like Goonies or things like that, which is like, like part of Americana. A lot of people said Top Gun, Maverick, agree a thousand percent. You know, the newest Top Gun to me was straight. The only thing that made it great was that we hadn't seen a new movie in two years. That's what made it great that we hadn't seen a new movie in two years and that there were, it was like, and, and, and whatever you want to say about him, Tom Cruise is a movie star. There aren't too many people who I'm like, that's a fucking straight up movie star. So, and he knows how to make a popcorn movie, but it was only great because there was nothing around it. I would say the same exact thing. And I said this last week, I think that Deadpool Wolverine, I would put that in my top Easily top five most overrated films of all time. E easy. From all the hype it had and all the money. I Dude, I wanted to turn that fucking thing off multiple times. But the only thing it didn't is like I paid $25 to watch this at the my house. I'm watching this whole thing. And that still couldn't stop me from falling asleep. Yeah, I would say that's overrated for sure. But I, I think Top Gun Maverick was straight... I think people just got caught up in, this is great? Okay, I'm going to say it's great too. Oh, you like it? Me too. Oh, you? Oh, me too, me too, me too. You know? And it was a different type of me too that caught on. But I, I'm with you on Top Gun Maverick, man. It, it, and like, let's, here's what I think is going on in Hollywood. 
People are so scared to make mistakes. They're not doing anything original. They're just regurgitating old things that have some sort of or old ideas or old. I think it's a bummer. I think fear, it makes creativity stagnant. And I think the whole fucking town is scared. One man's opinion. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get your opinion on this, guys. Um, please tell me what you think. And there's some Mad Max Fury Roads in there. Please tell me what you think is your most overrated film of all time. If you're watching on YouTube, just leave it in the comments. Um, and if you're listening, go ahead and send me a message however you would send me a message. I'm super curious what you think it is. Anyways, uh, let me just do a quick little uh, update. First of all, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Guys, we're over 250,000 views for the special, which is amazing. Thank you all so much. Um, I think it's, it's all word of mouth, man. There's no podcast, no, besides this one that I'm out promoting it. And, um, so this has just been all me and you. And so thank you guys so much for helping me spread the word. If you can help some more and you haven't seen four stories yet, go to four stories, comedy.com and check it out. If you can do me a favor and just leave a comment it helps the algorithm, or if you can share it, helps it even more. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when this comes out, I'll be in Denver Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week. And then check out my November schedule. We are packed. We are on the road. Um, if you're listening to this now, I just had my 55th birthday here in Vegas. I'm going to see my chemical romance and fallout boy at the, when we were young festival. And I'm going with, uh, Caitlin and Trevor and Beth. Um, and so super excited, man, about that. You're looking to. Crack open a cold one, guys. There's no better brew than the best day brew, man. It's so good. So tasty. The best tasting beer I honestly think I've ever had. And it's non-alcoholic. I call it a beer because it tastes so good like a beer. Non-alcoholic. The guy who runs at gym is such a good dude. He keeps the, the batch small and the company small. So, you know, he keeps quality control. Uh, it is so tasty and you right out of a can The nostalgia is there for me. It makes me feel sometimes I feel weird, man, not drinking out and you know, people, everyone else is. So to have one and have a cold one in my hand, I don't know. It feels silly. Like, why do you care? It just sometimes does. And so it just feels better and it tastes great. And I uh, can't wait to crack one open with Jacob Wolf when he gets out this weekend. I did Bozeman. Salt Lake City, and then Boise. Guys, Matt, my buddy's nine-year-old son opened for me playing guitar. Have I sent you that video? Dude, we got to post it. This kid fucking ripped it. Ripped it. Ripped it. Oh, and by the way, guys, another announcement. Friday show in Denver will be the last mushroom show for the foreseeable future. Um. I already have been making some uh, situations with uh, the people in Denver, so I didn't want to back out on that. And um, so, yeah, last Mushroom Show will be Friday Late Show in Denver. So if you're listening and you're close, you're going to want to come out and check that out. But, yo, dude, Bozeman, Montana, I have to tell you, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. So great. But... Yo, you can tell the people from Montana and the people from California. The people from Ca Montana look like regular people. The people from California walking down the street in Bozeman, full dusters. Full length, crisp, no dust on them dusters. Cowboy hats, bolo ties, spurs on their boots. That's like they watched Yellowstone one time and they were like, this is what I'm going to wear in Bozeman. You fucking assholes. God. Damn, you just jerk. You look like a bunch of jerk offs. Toothpick in your mouth. Howdy, partner. Eat my asshole. This is, it is like so dumb. And look, I lived in California and LA for 20 some odd years. You're making assholes of yourselves, my friends. Just go. You don't have to dress like how you think the people in that state dress. When you go to Florida, do you wear flip flops and a fucking G string? No. And a tank top? No. 
You don't dress like the guy, the Floridians. When, you know what I mean? Just just because you're in a Bozeman doesn't mean like I'm gonna wear the <laughs> I'm gonna wear this cowboy hat with eight turquoise stones on it. Fucking relax, relax, relax. Um, then we that drive from Bozeman to Salt Lake was maybe the, my favorite drive I've ever made. Um, I listened, Jacob Wolf. We had the reason I made the drive is Jacob and I enjoy road trips, and so I had planned it. Yeah, obviously pre him going into sober living. And I spoke to him and I was like, I I think I'm still going to do the drive. And he said, cool. And he said, let me send you a few albums that I wanted to play for you. So I listened to the albums that he wanted to play for me on the ride over. It was great, a great time. Get to Salt Lake. Beth was there. Lee Syatt was there. We saw my cousin Scott and his wife, Kelly, and his beautiful kids. Um... The shows in Salt Lake were amazing. I can't wait for you guys to see the clips. And then we drove over to Boise at the Knitting Factory where I filmed my special father of the year. I love going there, dude. Always great time. Always incredible memories. But what a great weekend of just stand-up comedy. I already have another hour ready to post, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to give it a couple months um, just so everybody can see this one. And then, bam, we're going to drop another one on you. That's right. You're going to drop another one on you guys. I wish we had some email music. I can put it in post. Guys, time for email. It's time to read emails, motherfucker. You've got mail. <laughs> what about that? I don't mind that. Something like that. Okay. We'll get to that. Um, your emails. I want to let you guys know the ones, the urban dictionary terms that you have sent in. I have, we're going to start using those, you know, because Jacob would give one to me every week. So from now on, I'm going to send one to Matt that you sent to me. I'm going to, we're going to read your name and we're going to give you credit. If we read your urban dictionary term, I'm going to give you two tickets to a show. Guys, if you send an email into the show and I read it, I'm giving you two tickets to a show. I want to say, uh, 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 by the way, uh, hello and thank you to the people in Salt Lake who reached out to me about tickets to the shows. Remember, I, if you are a single dad, if you are somebody looking to reconnect with your kid or your parent, if you're brothers and you want to hang out together, if you're family members and you're like, man, I want to go to a show to hang out and reconnect, I'm basically giving away 10 tickets a weekend. Not basically. I'm giving away 10 tickets a weekend. All you got to do is email me, man. It's so easy. Hey, man, pod at gmail.com man with three A's. I, if, if you're, if, if I don't get back to you, that means I got too many requests. I didn't get your email. If I get back to you, you got two, you get tickets. Also, man, send in advice or questions. If I read your email on the show at all, two tickets to any show. I'm trying to give back to you guys. Um, it's important to me, man, that, that I can show you guys how important you are to me. Um, just for the support that you guys give us. All right. So a couple emails this week, and I'm going to paraphrase them. Um, I didn't bring my computer this week because I'm going from here to the gym. And I didn't want to leave my computer in the car and didn't want to bring it into the gym because somebody got their computer stolen from the gym the other day, which I don't understand how that happens. There's so many people in the locker room Oh, well, you, you can't have cameras in the locker room. That makes sense. I was like, check the cameras. But if there were cameras in the locker room, people would be checking them for different reasons. So I, I take that back. All right. So this is from Matt Franklin. Matt, if you're listening, dude, just for me reaching out, two tickets to the show. And your basic question was, when Jacob gets out and gets back on the road, how are things going to be different? And I'll tell you, dude, thank you for very much for asking. I have wondered this myself. You know, I, I've been, you know, the big thing, I've been smoking weed and doing late shows for 15 years. And some people, some of my fans come for those shows. They come because they like, they like it a little silly and a little loose. And I hadn't thought of it until Jacob went, to sober living, but it is part of my brand that I don't know if I've, it, 
Yeah, it is. It's part of my brand. I I am a dude who's, who in the past has smoked weed and been open about it and taking mushrooms and been open about it. And I am just not going to be able to be that guy is all it is. Um, I won't be getting high before shows, during shows, at the club, at the hotel, at the condo. It's going to be sober weekend for both of us. So that's change number one. Um, I won't have to take extra care to look after him because I've never let him get his own hotel room. I always make him stay with me because I've been trying to shield him from trouble. Um, it just, and um, so that won't change. We, there will be a couple mandatory things for him that I will be involved with if he wants me to. But he's going to have to go to meetings on the weekend. Before the shows, he'll have to go to some meetings. Um, and I will be more health conscious. Not doesn't mean drink eight glasses of water. Just do, it's not just physical. It's all around mental, emotional, physical, uplifting health. Like just, I want him to be selfish and that is not necessarily a bad word. I want him to be selfish about what's good for him for the next however long. So the focus will be on the road on him and how to create a healthy lifestyle and healthy habits for him. So that's it. That's all it'll be about is continuing that. And that's how it'll change. And I, people, a lot of people have asked me, are you bummed that you are going to have to Stop being high all the time. Yeah, for sure. Super bummed. I love being high. But I think something you, you guys don't know about me. I'm not, I don't smoke weed before 8 p.m. I don't wake and bake. I'm never high during the day. I get my shit done. And I'm not a dude who's ever been tempted to do it. I, I have, it's weird. Like I am, I have all in a mentality in life. But I can also pull out, that sounds dirty, and it isn't. I can also pull out when I need to. If I'm like, oh, all right, I'm done with this. I'm not going to do it anymore. So, but as long as I can go all in on it, I can't dabble. Like, I couldn't just kind of smoke. I'm either smoking or I'm not smoking. But there isn't like, yeah, I'll just have a couple hits a week. That doesn't work for me. But I can quit something like that, but I can start it like that too. So is it going to bum me out? Yes. You know what will bum me out more is my son not being alive. So it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Now, I'm going to go hard in the paint until he gets out. Oh, yeah. I might even start smoking at 7.30 p.m. No, I'm going to, like, I'll have a couple mushroom trips, and, and I'm going to a concert this weekend, and I've already told him, man, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to be who I am with drugs uh, until you get out, just def- not publicly. Like, there won't be any more of me smoking weed on screen. There won't be any of that shit. Um, just one more mushroom show. And, um, yeah, man, I, I I will go hard in the paint until he gets out, and then I'll go hard in the paint the other way when he, when he gets out. And so that's it. There's zero... There's z- zero parts of me who thinks that I could still smoke weed and be around him. That is not fair to him. And it's not full support for his sobriety and his, in his health. So anything that gets in the way of that is a no go for me, but I appreciate the email dude and, uh, reach out to me. Um, send me an email and you, and you get two, a ticket, a two, a show. I have, Another question, which I really like, Luis Patello. I hope I remember that last name, Luis Patello. Luis wants to know. Luis is probably what it is, not Luis. Luis, L-O-U-I-S-E. Because Luis sounds like a Hispanic dude. So I think this is Luis. 
just in case there was a dude named Luis Patello listening. And he's like, I didn't send anything in, but, and Luis is like, ah, it's weird that that Luis guy had the same question. <laughs> and the same last name. Who would have fucking thought about that? Right. Luis wants to know how do I get, basically the question was, how do I get my kid six years old? to listen to me. She doesn't want to listen. And Louise, I would say this. And 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 listen, you're calling ask. So I'm going to tell you. Yo, what the fuck are you talking about? In the nicest way. You're the grown-up. It, this is what I don't understand. My kid doesn't want to do it. <laughs> well, are you giving your kid the option? It's like, you know, you know my dad gave me some great advice once. He watched me and we were having dinner with the kids. And I was like, hey, do you want, do you want, do you want? And they were like, no, no, no. And my dad was like, you're giving them too many options. If you give them the options, they're going to run you around like this is a fucking diner. This is what's for dinner. You want to eat it? This, my dad, you don't have to eat it, but you can't go eat something else. And you're going to be hungry tomorrow. But the, you don't get to eat what you, this isn't a diner. This is, I'm going to make food that I know you've eaten before. And if I try something new, you're going to try it. You're going to try it. But I'm not going to make, like, if you don't like grilled cheese, I'm not going to make grilled cheese and make you eat it. But this isn't a diner. So that's the thing, man. Louise, what I would say to you is, if they're like, I don't want to do that, oh, cool. I'll tell you what, go sit, because I'm not a dude who lay hands on. I'm not a... Go sit in your room, give me your phone, give me whatever. Be consistent. Don't be mad. Don't be volatile. Those people can't be trusted, man. If I'm a kid and this big person is out of control, that's fear. And then you're just trying to trying to navigate your life so that big person isn't raging. Stay calm. They can rage if they want, but they have to know that this is a sane human who's like, yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Totally. But you're going to be, yo, dude, we put Jacob in his room for a summer. He walked into the house after his last day of school. He walked into his room and he didn't do shit all summer because I told him something. I didn't get mad. I didn't scream his face. But I was like, if I see you with a vape, dude, and you know, he never did. He never vaped again. You know what else he never did? Any of that shit where I said to him, yeah, listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to yell and scream at you, but here's what happens if you do this. And do you want to sit in your room for three months? And most kids are going to be like, yeah, that doesn't sound great. And this person means what they say. You have to be consistent. One of the reasons that your kid butts heads with you all the time is because they think they can change your mind because you, if they know that if they scream enough, you're going to be like, fine, nah, let them scream, let them do whatever the fuck, let them. You are the grown-up. You have to prove to them that you are the grown-up. And they have to trust that you mean what you say and you're not fucking about. And that doesn't have to come through screaming or laying hands on. That comes from consistency, doing what you say. And that's it. And not being some fucking, somebody who flies off the handle that they can't, that they don't know how you're going to react. That volatile situation creates liars. It creates liars. It creates people like, well, I don't want that person to fucking, I don't know how they're going to react. Just stay calm. Stay cool. Stay somebody that they can trust to say something to you, but also be somebody who's the grown up in the room and be like, yeah, man, this is your action. Here's your consequence. I I didn't make the rule. I didn't make the rules, but I, I didn't make you do that. I just told you this is what happens if you do it. And so you did it. This is what happens. One plus one equals two. But like, I, I, I think it's, I think whenever I've heard people ask me that question, you know, the answer, the answer is be the grown up. That's it. The answer is now, are there some kids who have some chemical problems or some, you know, uh, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm not talking about the outliers. I'm talking about in general, in general, you're going to have some kids butt heads with you, dude. You have to be grown up and be consistent. Period, period, period. And I don't mean your period, Luis. 
Louise does not get his period, but Lu- no, Lu- Louise does. Louise does or Louise? Louise doesn't, but Louise does. Well, it's 2024. Louise might. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Louise and Louise might be the same person. So, but that's it. I want everyone also to know that we are 37 minutes in and this doesn't count, but no dick talk. Vin Diesel trying to pretend that he doesn't swish when he walks. Dude, he swings his hips, that tiny little dude. That dude sucks all the dicks. Are you kidding? <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? That little dude seems like a fucking just a dick. All the stories I've ever heard about Vin Diesel is just dick, a dick, a dick, a dick. This doesn't count as dick talk. This doesn't count. Me pointing out there hasn't been dick talk. Does not dick talk is gonna take the place of TikTok, by the way. When TikTok goes out, I'm starting an app called TikTok. That counts. Oh, that does count. <laughs> that counts. I was going for a joke, and that counts. But <laughs> damn it. All right. Well, 37 minutes, and I was trying to point out, but then I kind of slipped into dick talk, which is I, I actually went literal dick talk. Um, but all right. So let's do one more email. And I had an email. This is, dude, uh, by the way, in Luis or Louise, two tickets. Uh, this email comes from someone who says they're 16. So if you want the two tickets, you'd have to come with a parent. Okay. So when you, when I, when you email me back, if you're listening, um, please uh, um. Make sure I know that your parent is coming. That's the way you're going to be able to come on the show. But this is from a young dude named Jaden um, who has been having some problems connecting with his dad. Uh, and here's what I would say, dude. I think it's your dad's job to connect with you and not your dad, your job to connect with your dad. What I mean by that is, for example, if you're into anime and he's into sports, it's not your job to sit down and try to connect through football. It really is his job to come to you and connect through anime. That's my first opinion. Okay. So I don't want you changing who you are, man. Um, that ends up with resentment and, but since you asked, and since it seems like you are somebody who is willing to meet your dad wherever, so you can have a relationship. Why don't you try this? Why don't you say, hey, hey, dude, I love you because the, the email basically said we used to be close and now we're not. And one of the reasons, dude, is because when you're younger, you kind of just fall in, a lot of young kids fall into what the family's doing and you're all together. And as you get older, you really start to figure out or try different things. And, and a lot of times you try things that your parents are not into haircuts, clothes, music, movies. It's your parents' job to understand you, not to change you into them. This is a recipe my, in my mind, a recipe for disaster. They need to come to you. But if what you're telling me is that you don't think or, or you're willing to meet your dad. I would meet him halfway and be like, man, I love you. We, we used to have so much fun together. I want to hang out with you. I would love for you to teach me something about football. What am I missing? I would love to watch a game with you. If you will also, whatever your ask is, go to an anime convention with me. Can I show you my favorite anime cart, uh, show? Can I show you a couple clips? Can I show you who my favorite characters are? And look, man, I can't speak for everybody. But I think most dads want to have a relationship with their kid. Now, I do think a lot of people make the mistake of being like, they need to be this person. They're not going to be you. You weren't your dad. Your dad wasn't his dad. Right? You're your own person. And so... But I, if, if you don't think, man, that that is the way to go, just having him come to you, yeah, you know, just because he's, he knows probably you don't love football. 
but he's going to see you're meeting him halfway. And, and if, and if he truly is into, uh, a relationship with you, he'll be like, yeah, that sounds good. But I would try that, man. I would try, look, get everybody at the end of the day, your family's who you got. It's who you got, man, a lot of times. And, um, I would say not all, not all, certainly not all, but most parents are just doing the best they can. Some are better in air quotes at it than others, but most aren't maliciously doing things to their kids. Most, most parents are even, they're just, they're not, they're doing the best they can. And maybe your dad is having a hard time being like, dude, I can't believe my fucking son is into it. You know, maybe he's growing out and he's not a, I can't believe he's not into sports. Show him. Meet him halfway. That's what I would say. Um, and that's what I got, Jaden. Listen, I would love for you and your dad to come to a show. So reach out to me, man. I would love for you guys to be able to come to a show. That would be amazing. I would absolutely love it. Reach out to me, dude. Hey, man, pod. Hey, man, man with three A's. Hey, man, pod at gmail.com. Send me in any questions. If I read them on the air, I will give you two tickets to a show. Hey, man, pod at gmail.com. Matt, what you got for news stuff? The headline is high court rules calling a man bald is sexual harassment. Okay, before I get into the judge just said using the word bald about a man could breach equality laws because it is inherently related to gender. Can I say something? Okay. First of all, I agree. If if you because there's a lot of good you, it's like women are cool with making jokes about dudes being bald. And I you know guys, me, I'm a I'm, I like jokes. But you you can't say it's okay to make fun of a bald dude and not a fat woman. That's not okay. Be- because he truly can't do anything about that hair. That is falling out. And I would say you have more control over your weight than he does about if his hair is falling out or not. So if that's the, because I know a lot of people, well, she can't help. Well, he definitely can't help it. Okay? He definitely, get getting on the treadmill is not going to make, eating a salad is not going to make, you know, Lowering his calorie count every day, not going to make him grow hair. Okay. So now he could take like a Propecia, but that doesn't work as good as an Ozempic. That doesn't grow it. It just supposedly keeps it from falling out. So I a hundred percent agree that it seems a little fucked up that making fun of a bald dude is okay, but everybody's up in arm about body sensitivity. All right. On the other hand, dude, stop being such a pussy. Stop being such a pussy. Okay, you're bald, dude. You've been bald. I, you know, I'm getting a little patch on the top here. But you've been bald for, uh, looking at your head, a long time. A, a long, nobody's telling you something you don't know. And does it really, does the word bald really, come on, are we all just so sensitive? Like, I guess I would have to know in context, he said he was a victim of sexual harassment after comments were made about his baldness, including being called a stupid bald cock. Yeah, dude. Okay. If he had just called you a stupid cock, that would have been better. Uh, it, you, uh, I, guess, uh, I guess I'm not that sensitive where the word bald would make that so much Worse, I would hate, look, man, I'd rather you call me bald than stupid. One, one is just, yeah, it's a fact. I'm bald. Do you know what I mean? It's just what it is. I'm bald. Like if I called someone, hey, dude, you're kind of fat. Well, that might be a fact. You might be kind of fat, right? This is, I don't. Mm. Aren't most cocks bald? Yeah, the, the good ones. You don't want a hairy cock. That. Dude, a hairy shaft is would be like, if you had to shave your shaft, shave the shaft, 
Shave the Shaft sounds like a, some sort of <laughs> band name. Yeah. It also sounds like some sort of charity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, everybody, make sure you donate to Shave the Shaft. Uh, this is the Shave the Shaft telethon. Uh, we're going 18 straight hours. Uh, let's see how much money we can raise for Shave the Shaft. Does, but, does this count, by the way? TikTok? Yeah. Well, you brought it up. <laughs> you, you brought it up. You chose to talk about the article. Yeah, but I wasn't talking about his dick. Although this dude's head does look penile. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that I don't understand, man. The remark crossed the line. Here's what I do agree. I don't agree that it, we find it inherently related to sex. I don't, but I do agree that if you are okay, and I know a lot of insults for women towards dudes about being bald. If you're okay with that, you got to be okay with us talking about your body. I, this is the thing I want to say about insults and jokes in general. I'm okay with all of them. Is it funny? I'm okay with it. But you can't decide making fun of bald dudes is okay, but making fun of fat people isn't. You can't say it's okay to make fun of bald people, but not retarded guys. You can't help either one. You can't pick and choose your morale. Well, you can, but this is my point of view. You can't just decide this group is okay to make fun of and this group isn't because of your own sensibilities. Either you get to make fun of everybody, which is the camp I'm in, or you don't get to make fun of anybody. And I don't care which camp you won't be in, but I think it's incredibly hypocritical to say that it's okay. I love Mexican jokes, but because I'm Asian, if you make a fucking Asian, right? I just don't think it's okay. I think we're better off putting everybody in the same pool. Everybody gets to get shots fired. You know, nobody's above a joke. And we go from there. Um, but this, this, this bald dude um, feels a bit soft. Ah, I don't need any flaccid bald jokes. All right. What else you got? This article... I'm so intrigued by it. because on one hand, I don't love raccoons, but on the other hand, I love raccoons. Nature's bandits. More than a hundred raccoons. And this word being used in a news article about raccoons is amazing. More than 100 raccoons besiege house of woman who had been feeding them. Guys, when you see the video, we're going to put the video up. Mm -hmm. We'll put the video up on the, and if you're listening, I'm sorry. I know some people send me emails. You don't, don't show videos on the podcast. We're listening. I am just doing the podcast that I want to do. I a hundred percent encourage and appreciate you listening, but I'm also going to show some of these videos because they make me laugh. So uh, apologies, but here's how it is. This woman was feeding raccoons and she looked out her house. Guys, when I tell you it looks like a, a fucking Disney movie, doesn't it? It looks like beep, 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 and everybody's just, they come out and the birds are singing and there's a hundred, there are a hundred raccoons just waiting for this woman. So she's been feeding them for 35 years. Is that what that said? This is so crazy. And here's the thing about the raccoons. None of them, there's a cop just sitting there filming them. And they're not freaked out. They're just waiting to get food. But this shows you, by the way, you know when you're like, what are there, like four, four raccoons in a forest? Like, you know what I mean? You're like, what is, how, how many raccoons are going to be? A uh, hundred? A hundred? October 3rd, a hundred raccoons showed up at her house. Now, I, if I, I probably would have just thrown some food in the middle and seen what had happened, but these raccoons are just chilling, waiting for their food. And, and they are honestly kind of adorable. <laughs> They're kind of adorable. I didn't think that I would like it as much. Can I tell you one of my, my weird fears are ready for this. One of my weird fears and one of the reasons that I hate throwing the trash away in our bins at night 
is that I'm going to open the bin and there's going to be a raccoon in there. Anytime I throw away trash into the trash bin outside, I kick the trash bin a couple of times just to let them know I'm throwing trash in. Not that I, I don't know what the kicking does except startles them, which probably isn't good anyways. But I, uh, yeah, I, they were shocked. They'd never seen so many raccoons in one place. Yeah. Why would you? A swarm of raccoons. You don't ever want to be in a swarm of raccoons. That feels dangerous. I love how calm the police dude is in this video. He's just sitting there. I would definitely be in the house looking out the window. Um, they, they said that her neighbors are not exactly thrilled. Yeah, no shit. I would be upset too. My dogs have gotten in a scuffle several times with a raccoon. That is not a good move for your dog. Yeah, I don't want to be a dog in this situation. For sure. And what is she feeding the raccoons? That's what I want to know. What is so tasty that is, that is bringing a hundred, like the raccoon ran into the woods and was like, yo, dude. You got to come with me next time. This woman, like, what is she feeding? I think we should find out what the raccoon food is. This feels like a drug dealer. <laughs> That's what it feels like. I like how the article mentions that they showed up demanding food, like they were entitled to it. Well, they knocked on the door and they're like, hey, I brought some of my friends this time. You cool? And she looked outside and there was a hundred. You know, it, it, it does look like a Disney movie. Like they're all just sitting around like, hey. This is like Ratatouille times a million because they're raccoons. You know how they call it like a murder of crows? When yeah. Like a big group of crows. I wonder if there's a name for like this many raccoons. Yeah, it's a fuck ton. <laughs> it's a fuck ton of raccoons. I just Googled it. It's called fuck ton of raccoons. Raccoons. Guys, this is, I'm so fascinated how the word spread in the raccoon world. That, hey, dude, October 3rd. It, you know what I mean? It's like a protest. Like they, like how did... Guys, October 3rd, we got to hit up Sally's. Yeah, dude, she's, she's got that dope-ass grilled cheese. Like, what is she... Again, I don't think raccoons are super picky, but this feels like she, she was giving away chocolate sundaes or something, like Choco Tacos or Chip Witches. The only thing I know about raccoons I learned from the movie The Great Outdoors, Yeah, and that's that they don't eat hot dogs. I... Is The Great Outdoors feels like not a documentary. No, it's a uh, John Candy and um, yeah. So it feels like maybe they do eat hot dogs because I think they eat everything. Well, when I was a kid, I was like, "Oh, hot dogs are made of lips and assholes, so raccoons don't eat them." Well, they they are made of lips and assholes. <laughs> Did I tell you there was one time I was out in front of the comedy store and there was a place where there were hot dogs and shit, and I bought this hot dog and I handed it to this homeless guy and he goes, "I don't eat hot dogs." I said, "What?" He was asking for food. I gave him a hot dog. He goes, I don't eat dogs, hot dogs. I go, what do, you, what do you mean? He goes, you know what's in those? Those are terrible for you. I'm like, you are a California homeless person. Did you, are you health conscious, dude? What are you, you looking for a vegan dog on a gluten-free bun, bro? That's not coming from this exact. You don't want this? Okay, I'll eat it. Um, all right. I, I just have more questions. Like, I just want to know what she was feeding them, how she got rid of them, why they all came on this night, how often was she feeding them? And how does the news spread? Is this all one family of raccoons? Is this is do you know what I mean? I I am so curious. A couple of those raccoons look pretty well fed. They look like dogs. But I'm just so curious by this. And I want to ask you all a question. As far as forest quitter forest critters go or as critiker <laughs> lazy eye just one lazy eye <laughs> raccoon forest critiker uh what if there was one critter from the forest that you don't want to be have a hundred surrounding your house is this the one let's say bears yeah that's out of critter that's not a critter a hundred uh, bears Ugh, possum hmm. I'd rather have a raccoon than a possum. I don't know. Porcupine? Aren't raccoons like more vicious? Are they vicious? I think they're smarter. Like, look at that one right in the middle licking his belly button. 
I think they're smarter. They're pretty smart and they have thumbs so they can open doors. Honey, I don't like honey that. Honey badgers. No, I'm out on honey badger. I think I would take possum because I'd walk outside and they'd all pretend like they were dead. <laughs> I like that idea. You know, one time a possum was in our house when I was growing up. My dad walked right past it. Uh, and we were freaking out. Did you see the possum in the, in the dining room? He was like, what? I was like, there's possum in the dining room. It had crawled up. We had a hole in the dining room floor because from where I had dropped a keg. And it crawled up through the floor and freaked me out. My dad walked outside, walked right past it to the garage, grabbed a shovel that we used to shovel snow with, fucking doink, bumped it on top of the head, grazed it, scooped it up with the shovel, opened the door, and just fucking threw it outside and then walked back into the living room. He was like, what are we, what are we doing? I was like, that, that's so cute. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I go, I go, um, I go, hell no on the raccoons. Guys, uh, and just so you know, you know, in the in four stories, there is a um a story about me inventing a dance on spring break called the giddy up. And so one of the things I'm doing, I have a bunch of giddy up merch. Um, and I want to give it away to you guys. But here's what you have to do: you have to do an example of the giddy up on social media and tag me. And hopefully I see it. And if I see it, I will send, I'm gonna repost. And I will send you a Giddy Up t-shirt. So we have a couple of Giddy Ups. I just want to show you as an example of the video that you can do. So basically, go ahead. Um, this is a woman. I actually think I met her in Albuquerque. And she added a couple extra steps in. She's definitely a better dancer than I am. She added a little sidestep shuffle which I like. I like your style. So we will, and I will be sending you a uh, Giddy Up t-shirt. I already reached out to you, some of your address and your size. This next one, another uh, person, oh, I believe I have known, when I say known, but you know, uh, had some sort of conversation with on social media for years. I think she was around Chelsea lately too. So let's see this giddy up. If I remember, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's oh, she went wide leg giddy up, dude. Wide leg giddy up and thumb in the that was perfect. She went wide leg giddy up and thumb in the waist. I love all your uh, I, uh your interpretations of the giddy up. I will be sending you as well a t-shirt. Send me, we're gonna reach out to you. Send us your address and your t-shirt size guys so much fun i only have a limited amount of giddy up gear but i'm giving it all away so you want it come get it let me just say thank you for all the support jacob my special coming to the shows means a lot it's why i like to give back so thank you so much i know people ask i say you don't have to do that I know I don't have to, but I like to. So thank you all so much. I, um, it it uh, truly the um, a true joy coming in here every week. I love doing this podcast. I love doing it by myself. I love it even more with Jakey. So um, thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll see you in Denver this weekend. I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm in Sacramento, California. I'm in Bakersfield. I'm coming to you. Come out to see the show. Ladies and gentlemen, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates, fourstoriescomedy.com for the special. I love you. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Love you. Talk to you next week. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out. <laughs>